In the aftermath of last year's mass shooting in Parkland, Florida lawmakers took immediate action passing the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School Public Safety Act in homes of preventing another attack. Yeah, it was welcome news for gun safety advocates who for years had faced tough opposition, but some still say the measure didn't go far enough. This week, two South Florida lawmakers introduced a bill in the State House and the Senate that calls for background checks on people buying ammunition. The bill is known as Jamie's Law. It's named after Jamie Guttenberg, one of the seven killed in the Parkland mass shooting. And joining us right now is State Representative Dan Daly, who represents District 97, which includes Parkland and other parts of Broward County. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. And you introduced this bill in the House. Explain how it would work. Correct. So uh, we just introduced it last week in the Florida legislature, uh, both myself and Senator Book on the Senate side. Uh, and basically, as it works uh, today, uh, Florida law has a group of individuals who are prohibited from purchasing firearms and ammunition. The difference is that when that person goes to, uh, to, into a gun shop to purchase a firearm, there's a background check. Uh, that prevents them from being able to purchase that weapon. There's no background check for ammunition. So that means that same prohibited person can walk down the street to a different gun shop and purchase as much ammunition as they'd like with really no uh, preventative measure to keep them from doing so. So this would place a background requirement, background check requirement on uh, uh, purchases of ammunition as well. And this is an issue that's personal to you. Absolutely. Um, so aside from being a Stoneman Douglas uh, graduate myself, uh, I've served for the last six years on the Coral Springs City Commission prior to going to the legislature. Half the student body of, of Douglas uh, are, are Coral Springs residents, or were my kids. Uh, I've known a number of the, the victims and the families over the last um, over the last year and a half, I've known, for example, Aaron Feist since I was 15 years old. Um, so to me, the answer to preventing something like Douglas from ever happening again is all-encompassing. Uh, so it's mental health reform, uh, which you saw some of in that bill that passed a couple years ago. Um, it's school safety measures, which again passed a couple years ago. But it also includes reasonable gun reform, and something like this uh, is pretty reasonable. This is the low-hanging fruit. This is this is really kind of balancing the rights of our rights, my rights as a Second Amendment uh, as, a, as a citizen. Uh, with prohibiting the individuals that shouldn't have access to ammunition from getting it. Well, I mean, it sounds like it uh, makes a lot of sense, but if you look at history in Florida, the Florida legislature has sided sure. with the gun industry, with the exception of what happened after Parkland. What makes you optimistic about this passing? I'm not going to kid you. It's certainly an uphill battle, uh, but, I'm, but I'm cautiously optimistic because I don't look at this as an infringement on someone's Second Amendment rights. I look at this as a public safety issue. Right now, today, you have individuals who are prohibited from owning firearms able to walk into that same gun shop and purchase as much ammunition as you want. That's deeply concerning to me. So to me, this isn't a partisan issue. It's not a left or right issue. Uh, as a matter of fact, 72% of Florida voters uh, say the legislature needs to do more on gun reform, uh, needs to do more to curb gun violence. Um, gun violence uh, doesn't discriminate. It's in all of our communities in one way, shape, or form, and we need to do what we can to prevent it. And I'm sure you've heard from a lot of uh, responsible gun, or gun owners and gun owners in, in general who are saying this is infringing on our Second Amendment rights. It's a slippery slope, um, and this is an attempt to harass people who are abiding by the law. Sure, and that's not actually our, our intent. Um, certainly there are people who believe that, but we, if you look at the bill, we've really tried to balance those rights. So, for example, if somebody wants to take their uh, son or daughter to the, to the gun range for a weekend, there's an exemption for that. Uh, if somebody wants to go on a, on, a, on, a, on a hunting trip for the weekend, there's an exemption for that. There's, there's several exemptions in there because, again, we're trying to strike that balance. We're trying to keep that baseline individual who would otherwise walk in, uh, somebody that has a risk protection order uh, used against them, which I'm sure you're familiar with now mm -hmm. uh, since, since Dome and Douglas, could leave the courtroom and walk into a gun shop and purchase ammunition. That's concerning. So for me, uh, there's got to be some sort of balance, and I think it's what we've worked on here in this bill. How do you intend to take on the NRA and namely uh, Marion Hammer, who's been there, I don't know, decades? Sure. And she's actually written laws that the legislature has passed. I'm, I'm very, very familiar with Ms. Hammer um, and a number of her pieces of legislation, one that uh, prohibited local elected officials from even talking about right. uh, enacting reasonable reforms. Uh, my door's always ho uh, open. Uh, like I said, we've tried to really strike a balance. I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation with, with anybody, my colleagues on both sides of the aisle, to come up with a bill that, that honestly um, does justice to, to Jamie and so many others, uh, but also helps curb that, that gun violence that we see in our streets. And this is named after Jamie, why? Of course. So, you know, I, I had the opportunity um, and, and somewhat unfortunately, obviously, given the circumstances, to get to know Fred um, over the last year and a half. And this is something that Fred is, is deeply passionate about and things can make a real difference. And so uh, we named it after Jamie in, in, in her honor. 
Well, let's hope this time the legislature actually does what the people seem to want to do because, the, as you mentioned, the polls show that people do want change in this area. I don't think this is anything too over the top, too drastic. No. Again, it's a public safety measure. It's pretty reasonable, and I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. Thank you very much. Dan Daly, who represents Thanks. District uh, 97 in Broward County. Thank yes, you. Sir. Thanks.